Welcome to Will It Build, the series where I take your builds from my YouTube comments and Discord server and put them to the test to see if they are the real deal. If it's solid, then I'll gift you 1,000 silver. And if it's really something special, you'll be featured in a dedicated build video for your submitted build. So comment yours below so we can answer the question, Will It Build? Welcome back to another episode of Will It Build, your favorite build series on YouTube. Today, I wanted to look at a very high damage focused build that had to do with the recent Manticore buff updates. And we've got just that right here with the Flying Fortress submitted by Bad Juju Trav, who says, would you like to carpet bomb the enemy into smithereens? Step right up and try this build featuring the updated Manticore. Our scatter grenades will be carpet bombs and our Manticore will be our turrets. And I like that they included a nice little meme here as well. We're going to be like a plane. We're carpet bombing everything with grenades. Uh, we got turrets, uh, floating manticore, stuff like that. Going to be flying around the air all the time. So I'm actually really excited for this. Uh, the post is a little difficult to read. So I kind of took the liberty of already putting the build together and I'm just kind of going to walk through each piece of it briefly so you guys don't have to. Or if you would just prefer to take screenshots of what they did, this is kind of what they had for weapons. Although they didn't recommend any specific weapons, just the manticore is what is necessary. And then they have uh, all of the mod recommendations right here. I can tell you right out of the gate, I am 99% sure I'm going to be changing some of these mods. Comment down below if you have an idea what my problem with this current mod setup is i'm curious i want to test all y'all's build knowledge i'm gonna pick a random comment down below and whoever gets it right i'm gonna give you a thousand silver as well as bad juju trap for submitting this build if it does in fact build looking at the build very uh manticore centered which manticore of course did recently get some pretty major buffs if we come over here on the patch notes it says that um you can now special reload to disengage the anti-grav thrusters which is what keeps you airborne so a nice quality of life change while the anti-grav thrusters are engaged combatants will be less accurate so you're gonna overall take less damage when you're in the air utilizing the manticore and probably the biggest one the max damage buff from swooping talons has been increased from 40 percent up to 100 percent so more than double dps increase which is exactly what we're looking for when we're looking at builds that do very high damage which is obviously always the best builds the ones that do very high damage as far as the catalyst goes they made it so that final blows and sustained damage so this does work theoretically in higher end content as well, since you can just do sustained damage and still proc the catalyst. Um, we'll give you a void overshield and give you ammunition back to the magazine. Not exactly sure how much overshield and how much ammo, but we do have the Destiny Data Compendium for that, where we can come over here and look at a few things that are very crucial to the weapon. And I think understanding the numbers and how specifically the weapon operates is crucial to understanding how to master it and how to play extremely well with it. A lot of how the weapon functions is dependent specifically on on how often you hit targets, both with building up your anti-grav repulsor energy and spending it. First things first, hits while grounded charge 1% of anti-grav repulsors, whereas kills give you 10% charge. And then if we look at while you're in hover mode, hits drain 1% of anti-grav repulsors, adding plus 0.3 seconds to the duration up to a maximum of three seconds. So you do seem to continuously have to be shooting at things to remain hovering. And anti-grav repulsor drain is based on how often often you're hitting enemy targets. Additionally, it looks like it grants a 10% increased damage buff every 0.6 seconds up to that aforementioned 100% in the patch notes after six seconds of firing. And then it looks like the damage increase is reset upon leaving hovering mode. So you wanna try and make sure that you're consistently remaining hovering the entire time. It also looks like for the catalyst, scoring an airborne kill refills 12 ammo and grants a 15 HP overheal. Oh my God. As far as the catalyst goes, it looks like scoring an airborne kill or scoring five hits against non rank and file enemies, which is basically just non red bar enemies, will refill 12 ammo to the gun and grant a 15 HP overshield for six seconds, which is all really, really valuable information to have. Understanding exactly how these weapons operate genuinely is the way that you master them and make these builds work to their fullest potential. As far as the other weapons go, they didn't recommend anything specifically. So I'm just going with a disorienting grenades grenade launcher without a loading holster. And I wanted to go ahead and go with a void rocket launcher since we are investing in void weaponry. I like this Bray Deck Osprey with Envious Assassin and Bipod. You can get like a ridiculous amount of rockets in the mag at once. You'll see once we get into the will build, it is actually very very fun and funny to look at as far as our subclass setup goes they had sentinel shield for the super they recommended strafe lift shield throw and scatter grenade for the abilities 
They also had a setup with Bastions. Every time we cast our Barricade, we go ahead and give ourselves an Overshield, which is absolutely fantastic. And then we got Offensive Bulwark, where while we have an Overshield, our Grenade Charge is significantly faster. We have increased melee range and damage, and melee final blows will extend the duration of our Overshield, which is really, really powerful because theoretically, we're going to have Overshield all the time thanks to Manticore Catalyst when we get kills and continuous hits against non-rank and file enemies. As far as Fragments go, they've got us with the Echo of Persistence, so that void buffs applied to us, specifically overshield and devour in this case, will have increased duration. They've got us with the echo of starvation, so that anytime we pick up a void breach or orb of power, we get devour. They've got us with the echo of instability. Anytime we get grenade kills, we get volatile rounds to our void weapons, aka our manticore. And we've got the echo of undermining, so that when we throw our grenade at targets, it will weaken them and we'll do a bonus 20% damage to them. And just to give people an idea of how impactful offensive bulwark is in this build, if we come back into the Destiny Data Compendium, and we look specifically at offensive bulwark, you can see that while void overshield is active, we gain a 400% additional base grenade regeneration rate, which is extremely significant. It's going to lead to much more grenades, which is why I really like that they have us with Echo of Instability and Echo of Undermining, um, two grenade-based fragments that I think are going to really do a lot of work in this build. As far as the exotic goes, they have us rocking with Lion Rampants, where we get the exotic perk Jump Jets, provides additional aerial maneuverability, and enables accurate hip fire while you're in the air during lift. Also provides a large benefit to airborne effectiveness stat of all weapons while hip firing. So I think hip firing is generally speaking going to be a little bit better than aiming down sights with this build, but we'll see as we go. As far as the mod setup goes, as I alluded to, some things I'm probably going to change as we get down the line. If you commented down below that I have a problem with the fact that we have yellow armor charge mods and blue armor charge mods, you were indeed correct. My concern is that this disincentivizes us from throwing our grenade anytime we have armor charge stacks, because while we will consume those stacks and get more grenade energy back, it wipes away all of our stacks to be put towards Void Weapon Surges, aka bonus damage. It's gonna be a 17% bonus damage buff towards our Manticore and our Void Heavy Weapon. So that is the only concern. I'm probably gonna to wanna to end up swapping out Grenade Kickstart for something else down the line. We're always gonna go ahead and give what they recommend a try before we start making tweaks. As far as the rest of the mods, important things to note are Harmonic Siphon and Targeting. They've also got Grenade Kickstart and Firepower since we're gonna be throwing a lot of grenades and hopefully getting a lot of grenade kills. Got charged up so we get increased armor Armor charge stacks anytime we get instances of armor charge double void weapon surge for a 17 percent void weapon damage bonus class item they've got us with reaper and double bomber so we can generate orbs and get our grenade back whenever we use our class ability and then the other thing that i am probably going to want to change on the line is a copy of recuperation where we get health back every time we pick up an orb of power this is completely useless when we're using the Echo of Starvation, because when we're using the Echo of Starvation, picking up an Orb of Power is already going to give us a 100 HP heal. Sure, Recuperation is going to give an extra, I think, 66 HP, but I don't really see a lot of situations in which that's going to be super necessary. We're going to rock and roll with it for now, but I have a feeling I'm probably going to want to change that for something like Innervation down the line instead. So now with the entire build put together, we can go ahead and hop into the coil and test out to see if it works. Big thanks to Lilo and Cold from my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash MacDish, where I film all of these live. Okay, so step one with Manticore, we want to deal damage while we're on the ground to build up our anti-grav repulsor meter. And something I'm noticing right off the bat, if you look at the left side of my screen, you can see the anti-grav repulsor buff, but you can also see it under my reticle. If you see that little bar that's like filled up all the way so that you don't always necessarily have to be looking at the left side of your screen. See how it's kind of like going down a little bit now that I'm hitting enemies? Good thing to know. And so as you can see here, it looks like anti-grav repulsor, like I said, it's not necessarily based on how long you're in the air. It's based on your hits on enemies. Every time you hit an enemy, it's going to take away 1% of that. And then once we come back on the ground, we can go ahead and start frying enemies again to fill anti-grav repulsor back up. And then that'll give us more energy to come back in the air, mix in our grenade to get... Uh, potentially get those volatile rounds. I didn't get the final blow right there. But as you can see, if you look at my grenade down there, since I have Void Overshield up right now, and I'm continuously getting maintaining Void Overshield every time I kill enemies and every time I just do a lot of hits to non-red bar enemies, uh, it's going to continue to keep that Void Overshield up, which is massive if you remember that offensive bulwark aspect that we have going on. It's going to make it so we are getting our grenade much more often. I mean, like, look at my grenade icon. Just going really, really fast. I don't even really have that high of discipline either. 
I would say stats for this build, you're probably going to want to max out, I, I would say, tier 10 resilience and tier 10 discipline. I think my discipline is tier 6 right now, just because I don't have a ton of amazing options when it comes to uh, Titan armor. And then this is what I was really curious about. So this rocket, I have four rockets in the chamber, completely missed the first one. But as you can see, it still does some pretty sizable damage. And so let's get in the air and let's start frying this guy. And the more we shoot at him, the more our damage buff is going to amp up. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but I was shooting at him for quite a while. That ammo return was extremely noticeable from the catalyst. Where remember, every five hits that I score against non rank and file targets, scoring five hits against non rank and file enemies while in hover mode refills 12 ammo. However, it does incur a one second cooldown before hits count again. So you can't just infinitely spray because I know what you're thinking, right? Oh, well, if I get plus 12 bullets for every five hits, that's more bullets back than it requires bullets to hit them. Theoretically, it should be infinite ammo, right? But it does incur a one second cooldown. I wonder if you could kind of get around this and end up in like a permanent ammo situation if you did like a, a burst fire kind of thing the problem with that though is i don't know if that would ultimately lead to more or less damage it would probably kind of ride the line because sure you're never having to reload but at the same time uh you're firing the gun less i will say though one thing i'm already noticing that i'm not enjoying is like i said having that grenade kickstart on the build is really making me not want to use my grenade because anytime i have armor charge stacks when i throw my grenade i immediately lose that bonus 17 percent void weapon damage buff i'm already feeling like i'm gonna take this off i want to do one more room with it just to you know give it its due diligence but not liking it very much so far. I would much rather swap that out for something else. And I have something in mind that I'm going to put in there. And the, uh, the damage buff is very noticeable as well. Like it completely shreds these guys. And I also, the, the 12 bullet refund while airborne is also very noticeable. And it's making it feel really, really good for killing squishy enemies. Because it's, it's almost uh, acting like a sort of subsistence. If that makes sense, it kind of is subsistence in a way. Now, I really want to get my anti-grav repulsor back up. I'm curious if it uh, gives it to me even if I hit immune targets. Something to look at in a little bit. But let's go ahead and get our anti-grav repulsor back up. Let's get our grenade so we get volatile rounds as well and get this orb for devour. And let's go airborne. And so I'm curious, if I just go like burst fire, look at my ammo counter. Yeah, so you could you could literally theoretically have like infinite ammo with this if you do it in bursts. Like I said, I'm not sure as to what the viability of that is um, because, you know, the, the less you shoot, the less overall damage you're going to be doing, even if it does mean you ultimately don't have to reload. But uh, it, it feels pretty cool. So we'll kill one of them to get our anti-grav. You get your anti-grav repulsor charged up on the ground so quickly as well. So another thing I'm noticing. And even if you are just holding down the trigger the entire time, yes, you're not going to be able to fire it infinitely because of that one second penalty in between your ammo refund. But it's you can shoot the gun for a while. So let me let me get my anti-grav repulsor built back up. And let's just see how long we can shoot if we're just completely holding down the trigger. I mean, you probably, it has a 38 bullet mag. You're probably getting 60, 65 shots in before you end up having to reload. I mean, it's it's not insignificant. Maybe get our uh, Osprey rocket out. And absolutely cooked. I mean, that, that, that first boss fell over like it was made of paper. A couple changes, though, before we continue. Like I said, wasn't feeling the grenade kickstart. I'm going to swap it out for a harmonic loader so that we can reload our void weapons a little bit more quickly. What's What this is going to do as well is for people that like using fastball, it also opens up a little bit of energy for you to use fastball as well while still being able to run a four energy stat mod. I personally don't really like using fastball because my muscle memory has been trained on non-fastball grenade throwing, but if you do like fastball, now that slot's opened up for you. Um, and I especially love the Harmonic Siphon, but something I am noticing is even though I have a lot of ways to make orbs, I've got Reaper, Harmonic Siphon, and Firepower, it's kind of difficult and annoying to collect them 
because I'm always airborne. So I think I'm going to swap out one of these bombers for powerful attraction so that basically what I can do is kill some enemies and then slap my barricade on the ground to give myself an overshield for offensive bulwark, increased grenade regeneration, and it'll scoop up all the orbs around me to go ahead and give me armor charge for these void weapon surges. And then I can hop in the air and not really worry about having to run around and scavenge orbs. Another thing I'm noticing as well that powerful attraction will really, really help with is in scooping up the orbs, it will also help with us acquiring devour in the first place significantly because every time we scoop up an orb, uh, we go ahead and obtain devour from the echo of starvation. So I think our health regeneration is gonna feel immaculate. Yeah, you do, you do a ridiculous amount of damage when you're airborne. When you're airborne, realistically, you get 100 shots while you're airborne because every hit is going to decrease your anti-grav repulsor meter by 1%. But the fact that you get 10% of your anti-grav repulsor per kills while on the ground in conjunction with 1% per hit, you get that anti-grav repulsor meter filled up really, really, really quickly to the point where you're only honestly spending like 20% of your time on the ground. And also, I'm noticing when I'm fighting enemies that aren't nearly as tanky that I maybe don't need the 100% bonus damage buff for, I can kind of intentionally come back down to the ground either by deactivating my jump or remember you can hold the special reload to turn off the anti-grav repulsors. That'll allow you to come back down onto the ground and mop up the trash mobs and then you can go back to going airborne when you encounter something that's a little bit tankier and then that's when you can actually utilize your anti-grav repulsor energy um, and get that 100% damage buff when you actually need it another thing as well that i'm noticing despite removing the grenade kickstart i am i still have my grenade up pretty much 24 7 because the offensive bulwark and how much energy that I'm getting since I always have an overshield. Something I'm really questioning with this build though is I'm not really sure how necessary the lion rampants are to it. I know the entire idea is that this is an airborne based build and so you probably wanna use lion rampants because they're like the airborne exotic. However, I feel like you get so many airborne stat buffs just through using Manticore. Like I'm pretty sure Manticore completely nullifies any airborne effectiveness nerfs that you would receive otherwise. I think the Lion Rampants are actually a little bit redundant. And I think that you could totally get away with running a different exotic armor piece. Like I think Heart of Inmost Light would feel incredible with this. Is that it's like Peacekeepers or something like that? I know it's typically used for PVP, but do you guys think that that would be something that could be really good here. I don't even really know what it does because it's it's just a PvP exotic. Peacekeepers. Reloads stowed SMGs and instant ready. Improves your handling with submachine guns and your mo Yeah, this seems very PvP based. A lot of PvP stats, right? Handling, ready speed, stuff like that. Probably not super necessary. I think Armamentarium would be absolutely amazing with this build because we've already established that your grenade is extremely good with this build. That you get it, that you have it up pretty much always because of that offensive bulwark and uh, the overshields. Um, and so the fact that every grenade you throw weakens enemies and potentially gives your void weapons volatile rounds, um, I think Armamentarium could be incredible. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray this guy, get a ton of ammo back, and then we'll nail him on the ground, which will go ahead and get our anti-grav repulsors completely charged. And I'm noticing right now, uh, I don't have my overshield and I don't have my grenade. So a quick way I can get my overshield if I'm ever not able to hit something with my manticore, my melee ability, my shield toss, gives me a little bit of overshield energy. So another worthwhile note, anytime you need some overshield energy, just go ahead and chuck your shield toss at someone. So I'm thinking my DPS rotation is gonna be something along the lines of I'm gonna fill up my anti-grav repulsors all the way. I'm then going to completely empty them on the boss. And then once I use all of my anti-grav repulsor and I'm out of my 100% damage buff, um, then I can go ahead and switch to my rocket and unload all four of my rockets on the boss. So we'll just shoot at this guy with all of my anti-grav repulsor energy. And then because of my bipod envious assassin, I can hold like four rockets in there, completely eviscerate that guy. Let's see here. Doomfang pauldrons. 
Defeating targets with void damage has a chance to grant an escalating bonus to damage with void weapons. Yeah, I think this would 100% be the best exotic. And I know that they very specifically said that this build would be Lion Rampants, but gosh, it's just, it's tough to think that Doomfang wouldn't be head and shoulders above Lion Rampants. And I feel like we've already seen enough with Lion Rampants so far that I think we can give Doomfangs an honest to goodness try and see which one is actually better. And while I'm getting my mods realigned, I do want to note, I feel like recuperation is not really super useful for this build for the reasons I said previously. So I'm going to swap this recuperation to an innervation. So we have significantly more grenade uptime. In switching to Doom Fangs, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the way that these exotics typically work is they use the same system that the weapon surge mods use, right? Scoring two to three kills within 10 seconds of each other grants times one void weapon surge for 11 seconds, void kills while at times four weapon surge refresh the duration. On powered void melee kill, grants 20% super energy. Wait, what? I'm sorry, you get 20% of your super when you get a powered melee kill? So kill that guy, kill that guy. There's void weapon boost, kill. And, and then if I keep killing, will it go up to times two eventually? Or I'm not exactly. Okay, so there we go. Now it's up to times two. And so if I just keep killing enemies, we'll go up to times three eventually. But it seems like I have to kill them within a certain amount of time. Okay. So I still really love Doom Fangs for this because I feel like they're bringing a lot more to the table than Lion, Rampant, uh, Lion Rampants were. Like I said, I feel like honestly Lion Rampants weren't even doing anything because of how much in-air control you get intrinsically when you're using Manticore and from the anti-grab repulsors. I feel like just at a base level, they kind of make it so line rampants don't do anything. Um, and the fact that it makes your super probably 800 times better. And the fact that it allows you to get your super much more frequently. Because anytime we kill literally anything with a powered melee ability, we get 20% of our super just like that snap of our finger. And I kind of like still running the Void Weapon Surge mods because even though I don't think they stack with Doom Fangs, even though they conflict a little bit, um... I still like it because it basically means that we can either get our void weapon damage buff just through kills, um, which will stack it up through doom things, or anytime we pick up an orb of power, boom, we automatically have a minimum of a 17% void weapon damage buff. Oh, on powered void melee kill, automatically grants times four void weapon surge for 11 seconds. If I'm understanding things correctly, I can literally throw my melee at an enemy. Boom, there's times four, gives me 20% of my super. And then all I have to do is continue to kill enemies, and then it maintains that times four. And I get overshield for every kill. Yeah, that is exactly how that works. So it almost seems like it's easier to maintain times four because all you need is one kill to jump it back up to 11 seconds it seems like it's much easier to maintain times four of your damage buff than it actually is to get to times four because times four you need like two to three kills and increment uh to incrementally stack it up each time my if i throw my shield at stuff and i kill it i remember back in the day that doom fangs people would literally use them to like farm xp or farm ingrams in the whisper mission if anyone played back in those days, uh, there was like the underground area where you could literally just like sit there and kill the thrall all day. Okay, ephemeral virus times three. Let's smoke this dude real fast. Hop in the well to get rid of my virus. And then I'm going to put this down literally just so I get the overshield so I get a uh, higher grenade regeneration. So I can get some scatter grenades on him and get the echo of undermining for some weaken. And I really wish that I had my melee ability up right now so I could chuck it at a trash mob and get that times four weapon damage buff. But it's not the end of the world. Like I said, I've got those weapon surges on still and I have four stacks of armor charge. So I'm still getting the 17% damage buff. Sure, it's not the times four, which I believe would be a 20% damage buff or maybe a 25% damage buff. Um, but it's, I mean, it's still feeling really good. Although, now I do have my melee ability. <laughs> I would ask to edit that out of the video, but I know that's not happening. On the bright side, I've got five rockets in this guy. 
And come on, let me have my sentinel shield. Oh yeah. Just gonna throw a couple shield tosses because it'll hit him for some damage and bounce off of him to kill all the trash mobs. And we'll whack him a couple times with the shield and he is gone. Will it build? We made a lot of revisions and there's a couple different iterations you could go with here, but overall, no matter what you end up with, absolutely it'll build. The new Manticore feels absolutely fantastic in lower end content and even feels good in higher end content if you have the catalyst because of the ammo refund and the overshielding just for consecutive hits, not just on kills. As far as the mod setup, we made a lot of changes. This is where we ended up with the, on the mods. Main thing to point out is I didn't like grenade kickstart because I was kind of punished for throwing my grenade. It took away my void weapon and surge. This is what I would recommend personally, if you're asking me, this setup right here, screenshot it, plus this setup right here, screenshot this. But yeah, overall, very good build. We'll definitely build. If you want to have a chance to have your build featured in one of these episodes, make sure you submit your build in the Will It Build channel in my Discord server linked in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.